Hey, what's going on with you guys? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Cleveland. So if you notice behind me, guys, I'm in front of a very large aquarium right here. This tank is 240 gallons, eight foot long, two feet wide, 26 inches tall. This stand was built by yours truly. This is for the newcomers. This is for the people that just now tapping in with us. Welcome. I hope you enjoy this video. Hope you make sure you hit that subscribe button before this video is over with. Hit the like button and hit that notification bell. But anyway, so this tank is 240 gallons, stand built by yours truly, ran off three FX6 canister filters. We also have up top a DIY sump above the tank sump that's built by yours truly. So I was getting some requests on an update on this aquarium. They wanted to know how our silver air wine is doing. And he's doing absolutely amazing. He ate four pieces of shrimp today, whole shrimp. I, uh, I think I might try to feed him a little bit of tilapia as well, just a treat for you guys. Next time I'll make sure I do a little feeding on it and I'll make sure I post it. I post a lot of videos on TikTok, so you might wanna get on over there and, uh, and, and check out that content. I also post things on my Facebook page, The Fish Corner, as well as my Instagram page, The Fish Corner. So if you're not catching me on those sites, get on over there because those are where I'm doing like the quick little video updates, feedings, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I'm not gonna sit up there and just post like a 15 second video on YouTube. So anyway, get over there guys. So this tank is housing our Dovi right there who has made pretty much a full recovery guys. He was dealing with a bacterial infection. His eyes were bugged out. Um, Popeye, for those of you that know. And um, he's doing much better now. Eyes has gone down to about 98%. I'm still treating him with this Imagitarium bacterial remedy. Vouch for that. That so far has been the best treatment to take care of my fish. Um, we also have in here this big zebra tilapia call this guy buddy look at that look at the size comparison huge guys you really still can't see because it looks like my hand as big as this fish but my hand is not big as this fish we also have in here our bicher this is a del hazy del hazy whichever one you prefer to be to norm as i call him a del hazy we have in here our black stripe pike right back there he has grown in size tremendously when I got him. We bought him, he was like two inches. Now he's at least nine inches long. And then we also have our Lima shovel nose catfish right there, looking good. Right in front, let's, let's get Tangy. We gotta have to chase Tangy down. There go Tangy right here. That is our female red devil. Tangy is chasing around our male red devil. This one is pretty dope. We bought this guy because of because of his colorations. Wasn't quite sure if it was a male or female, but it's definitely a male. You see that nuchal hump coming in. It's a it's amazing because he absolutely had no black whatsoever on him. But now I'm noticing a little bit of black on the tip of his fins, dorsal fin, pectoral fin, as well as the tail fin. So um, it's amazing how these fish just change in color so much. Up top we have our Ohepsidus Odo Pike also known as the African Pike. Let's go down here to our other male red devil right here. This guy has turned completely orange. He was yellow, that's the, that's the one that we, that we named Sonny. And we named him Sonny because he was yellow, now he's orange. So it's just amazing how again, these fish, their colors just change as they mature. Let's get our um, true feste. Also known as a true red terror. That is a female. She's getting quite large as well, getting a little chased by the dovi. Let's see our, our red tail Brycon right here in the front. This is one of the OGs of the tank. We've had him for at least, I wanna say going on two years now. It's been quite a while. We would have to go all the way back in my videos to see when we got that guy. Who else am I missing? We have in here two Raphael cats. They stay tucked through. If anybody, if you guys own Raphael cats, whether it's spotted or striped, you know 
they hide all day long. It's crazy. You will not see them until feeding time. If you see them at feeding time. But I'm sure when the lights go out, middle of the night when we're asleep, they're out and about roaming around. And then um, let's come on over here. We have our O O triple O G. Our high fin spotted pleco right there, guys. This is one of my favorite fish. We've had him for over four years. He's probably about, I want to say, 11 inches now, close to a foot. He's pushing some size on him. And again, he was tiny. And look, there go our stripe Raphael cat. You got to look into that. To that, there we go. You see the stripe right there. That's one of them. And we have two. So you may notice a couple of things about this tank. You may notice the plants. These plants have been getting butchered by our buddy Kufferai right here, the zebra tilapia, butchered them. So this one is still standing, but this one I'm about to show you right here look just like the last one, guys. Look at it. Yeah, so it was, uh, I don't want to say it was a test because I know that they tend to butcher the plants, but I thought I could get away with it because all the little plants up top, they did not destroy them the way I thought they would. So I thought maybe if I get some bigger ones, you know, it didn't work out, guys. So um, maybe I'll just stick to the tiny plants, stick them in the rocks. They might not bother them so much, but they clearly just destroyed all of those. So... What about the arowana? I didn't know. Are you told? Well, that, I started with the arowana. Yeah, started with the arowana. Um, he was a startup right here. So, um, yeah, let me explain a couple of things to you about this aquarium. So, I mentioned I have a very large male dovine here. People on the fence about whether or not you could keep him with other fish or not. I've been keeping this dovi with tank mates from day one. It's been about two years, no issues whatsoever, never killed anybody, and he's growing in size. It's a mature male. The female I had, rest her soul, you know, she passed away a few months back, but um, we had her, and I had her for probably like three years in a community tank. So, it's entirely possible to house these very aggressive cichlids with other fish, with the right setup, with the right husbandry, and with a little experience with actually doing so. You know, so I will never have my dovi in a tank by itself. I will never have any fish in a tank by itself. All of my fish will continue to be community fish. So it's just about having the patience to see what works and what don't work. And this setup works. This dovi is pushing at least a foot that fish right there is a little bit bigger now, but it's probably like five inches. But when I put that fish in here, it was more like three inches. So as you can see, fish ranging in size. The dovi is not a maniac, not going on a killing spree like you would think. So just have a little bit of patience, do some research. I will give you this little tip. You're gonna wanna have a nice stock tank. Don't you, you can do overstocking if you have the right, if you have the right fish but you definitely want to have more than just two fish in there. Um, have a properly stocked tank. You want to have the core. The decor breaks the line of sight so your fish are able to get away from each other, things like that. That's very, very important. And then also you want to try to introduce them while they're around the same size. You know, that's another important thing. And lastly, make sure that you're adding fish in there that has some aggression, aggressive behavior as well, some great aggressive behavior patterns as well. Like the buddy Cawferi, the zebra tilapia, which is right here, is also a very aggressive fish. So I knew starting out from the day one when I started housing these dovis like nine years ago that I want to make sure that I have a buddy Cawferi in there, a red devil, and sometimes a green terror. Although a green terror is in, in considering how aggressive these other fish are, they're down, they're down low. But if you get a nice size one, temperament similar, you could get away with it. But those two fish right there alone will allow to have some kind of balance. 
So, um, and then once you start adding in other fish of different sizes and things like that, it seemed to work out, you know, just, just try it out for yourself, guys. Stop listening to everything that you, that you uh, see on the internet. Stop listening to everything. Well, stop listening to everything you hear on the internet and stop reading everything that you see on the internet because, you know, you, if you, if you want to do it for yourself, you really just got to get into it. You got to try it out. If it don't work out, I don't know how long you would keep a fish in there from, you know, that you see beating and stressing out and, and trying to kill another fish. But if I seen something like that, I would definitely remove it. So it's like, you know, it takes time for a fish to do that sometimes to actually destroy and kill everything in your tank. It don't just happen like this. So you could get in there, you can make uh, changes and arrangements that you need to do. Um, over the time, over the years of me housing this large dovi with other fish, even in the 125 I had, I constantly had to go in there and change up the decor and everything like that so they would have to reestablish territories. Um, I've also had to go in there and put dividers in the tank um, in order for them to break the aggression and calm down and things like that and then heal up. So um, it's just work that you got to put in. If it's worth it, you do it. If it's not worth it to you, you won't do it. So it's just, it's really on you. Um, since I've had this tank set up, I haven't had to put no dividers in here. Um, I haven't had to go in there and change up the decor otherwise, I mean, except for when I wanted to, because I wanted to see it a different way. If you hear my son in the background playing with his toys, or you hear that little jingle, that's what that is. My son is playing in the background. But as I was saying, I haven't had to go in here and change up the decor, the decor or anything like that to try to stop the aggression, curb the aggression. It's just because I wanted to see it look a different way because I want my tanks to look aesthetically pleasing. You know, it's not just about having a bare bottom, empty uh, glass box full of water and one fish in here. You know, we want to see our tanks. We want to look at our tanks and we want to enjoy them. We want our fish to enjoy them. And really, what fish is going to be happy with just having an empty tank? I mean, that's boring. I mean, that's like being in jail. You know what I mean? You can't do nothing. So, I mean, don't don't put your fish in jail, man. Like, it's already bad enough that we're taking them from the habitat or we're not giving them the ponds and the lakes and things that they actually would live in, these rivers. You know, we're having these, these aquariums which are tremendously smaller than the environment that they would be in in the wild. So, you know, giving them things to help entertain them. I mean, I don't like the fact that my plants got tore up, but I'm pretty sure my fish had a blast doing it. So, um, anyway, my, my little rant, my rave is done. So I said I was gonna try to feed. I was gonna try to feed this arowana some tilapia on camera for you guys. Um, let's see if he'll eat because, like I said, he ate four big jumbo shrimp earlier. But he's a very, very big eater. So let's see. And uh, no. Nope. Ah, well. You don't want to try again. Don't want to try again. You know he, you know he goes after it when he really wants it. I don't, I don't think he want to eat. Look at his stomach. It's big. Big belly on him. Let's try again. <laughs> Just watched it. Like, eh, nope. Not for me, guys. I'm done for today. Anyway. It was a long shot. Like I said, four jumbo shrimp, that's that's a lot. But anyway, guys, the pike <laughs> is happily to eat some more. And there's the Raphael cat. He smelled it. Mm-hmm. Come on, come to the front to grab it. Come on. Come to the front. He's not going to come to the front. Can you um, move this a little bit that way so he can smell it? Because um, the plecko want to come out too. Uh, I don't even have the tongs. They're, they're over there. Oh. It's fine. I usually leave in here a piece of tilapia or two because overnight, that's when our nocturnal cats come out and eat. I don't ever, I don't ever find the piece of tilapia or any of the food the next morning. So somebody eats it overnight. Here's another one. Come on, grab it, grab it. Yep, there we go. Did you get it? Oh no, I was. Oh my goodness. I was focusing on. Oh uh, well, 
We well, the arowana ate, and she was focusing on the wrong fish. So, sorry guys, that wasn't on me. But anyway. All right, guys, so that about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. Follow me on Instagram at The Fish Corner. Follow my Facebook page, The Fish Corner. Follow me on TikTok, The Fish Corner. And uh, until next time, guys, peace.